Hello, welcome to Ancestry Library Edition Part 1. In Part 1, we are going to learn how to log in to Ancestry. I'm going to introduce you to the forms you can find there, and we're going to do some basic searching the census. So my name is Kelly Cornwell, and I work at Fulton County Public Library System, and I am a special collections librarian at Central Library. I'm going to show you how to get to Ancestry and how to do some basic searching there. What you'll need is the Galileo password. Here's how to get it. In the right-hand corner, you log in to your account. I'm gonna log into my account. When you're all logged in, you go back up to that same corner and click on the email icon. You'll see that the Galileo database is password is awake. It changes about every three months and you can always find it right here. Now we want to go to our digital library services. So under services on the blue tab, you want to scroll down to digital library, click there. From here, we're gonna click on the big blue view all resources. This takes us to an A to Z page. And since Ancestry starts with A, we're just gonna scroll down. It's right here. We're going to click on it. It's asking us what institution we're with, Fulton County Library System. And here's where we're entering the password that we saved earlier. And here we are at the Ancestry homepage. But you can always click here or here to come back to this page if you get in trouble um, and need to back out and start over. So it's always right up here for you. Um, first thing I want to point out is charts and forms page. So let's click here. This is where you can find your ancestral chart. You can download these forms. Um, sometimes you have uh, several of them, so they have this handy dandy little thing here. And of course, when you first start, you're gonna start with yourself and work backwards in time. So you can print as many of those as you like. Um, you can also do a research calendar. And this is a really nice form um, to keep track of where you searched and what you searched. And I will come back to this, um, mention this a couple of times when we're looking at the census because there's a lot of involvement and you can't do it all in one sitting or all in one month or all in one year. And so you're really looking at keeping track of where you've been and what you searched for there so that you're not repeating yourself when you get back to it three months later. Um, there's also, if you correspond with people or you wanna keep working with someone else in your family, there are forms for that. Um, the research, you can summarize things on this research form. For example, the original census um, can't really be photocopied. I mean, you can do it, but it's not really readable. Some people use this form. There are also census forms here, which the census started in 1790. That was our very first census. And the last one that we have is 1940. You can also see there are the veterans schedules of 1890 and slave schedules of 1850 and 1860. Um, and what these are blank forms because they have different questions, different years, and it helps sometimes people like to print these and fill them out for their relatives. Um, so just um, a great page here to get all the charts and forms that you need. We're gonna go right back to the home page. There is a lot to do and a lot to look at on Ancestry. But what I wanna show you quickly is the US census records. Um, this is what we're going to look at today, our census records from 1790 to 1940. And I'm gonna show you how to look up someone in the census and how to sort of follow a family member through the census. Um, 
Ancestry has made so many improvements. Um, I'm going to show you all those great tools. They're just right at your fingertips. So I'm going to start um, in 1900. I'm choosing the 1900 census because I want to look up my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, and I know that she was born in 1899. The very first census she can appear in is 1900. So I'm gonna click here on 1900, and I'm gonna put in her names. There's a lot of information you can put in. You can put in as much information as you like, but if you're not finding your relative, um, you'll want to put in less information because sometimes the census does not match up exactly with your family history, what you know is the truth. And I'll show you some of that as we move forward. So this is um, not a common name. I only have 31 things. I happen to know um her parents names William and Mary and that she was born April 1899 in New York so this is her let's click here to see the record so this is a census record um you see why you might need the research page because here we have an alternate spelling so now if you wanted to search something like passenger list you would have two names to look for because we're not sure of the actual spelling um, tells you the person's age. This one tells you that she was born in April 1899, where they lived, um, their relation to the head of household, their gender and race, marital status, father's name. You'll see a lot of abbreviations like this. That's William, uh, Mary. And then you see that here we can click on William's page and we can click on Mary's page. And it's always an interesting thing to do because now we're walking backwards in time. And it's in the 1900 census. So these are links to these parental pages in 1900. <clears throat> Let's go up and look at the actual census really quickly. Okay, see what I mean about the census? It has nicely highlighted right here, our little family. So I'm going to enlarge and you'll see the headings coming up here. They didn't used to do this. And so this is, this is quite nice, but you can find additional information here. Like they often find out, okay, so the father and mother of my grandmother were born in New York, but their parents were both from Germany. And my great grandfather was a plumber. And it asked you things like if they can read and write, if they own the land. Um, and you can just sort of scroll over, you sort of grab it with a little hand and move it around. And it highlights the family. Now you'll see other things. So this is just a street. This was the neighbor. And this was their family. This is the next, you know, my grandmother's house. This is the house next to them, their other neighbor. So these are just all people on the same street. And sometimes you will find your relative lived in a boarding house and that can be very confusing. We're just going to go back. And now here are suggested records, which is just this beautiful addition that Ancestry has done. So you can see, um, my grandmother's, all of these records related to her, some which might not be her, some which might be her. But what I wanna focus on right now is walking you through the census. So here we are in 1900. The next census that's available to us is 1910. So we're going to click there and see what's happened to the family. Well, now we see that they still have the birth years 1899, but it says ABT, which means about. Um, no longer sure that it's April. They've moved to New Jersey from New York. Um, we have full spellings of the name now. And here we have the pages links again. These would be to the 1910 census. Um, my grandmother highlighted her younger sister has been born. And William's mother has moved 
into the household with them. We know it's William's mother because same last name. So it's, I love just walking through the census with people and seeing the different things that had happened. All right, so 1920 is the next year that we can view. And lots of stuff has happened here. So now we find that Emily had gotten married and her last name was changed to Emily Welsh. Now she's born about 1900 instead of 1899. She still lives in New Jersey. Um, she's still in her parents' house and she has been widowed. So she married and was widowed in this 10 year period. Um, she works as a stenographer at a newspaper. And then we're gonna we'll scroll down and we'll see that William has been born and she has a younger brother now, and she has also had a child. So she has married, had a child and been widowed in this 10 year period here in 1920. So we're gonna fly ahead another 10 years to 1930. Again, her name has changed. We have, again, about 1900. She's married. She still lives in New Jersey. She has married a man named Benjamin Boat, my grandfather, and she's had two sons and a daughter whose name is not Oral, but Ori, O-R-I-E. And you will see this a lot, different spellings of names. Um, because people who wrote the census, as you saw, it was all the same handwriting. This is just um, a person with a job going down the street and writing down the information they heard or thought they heard or misspelled themselves. You'll see stepson here. So they have been busy. And the last census that we have access to is the 1940 census. Census is only released every 72 years. So we just recently got 1940. Um, here, which is still Emily Vote. Now she's back to being born about 1899. She still lives in New Jersey. And she has again been busy. Um, so now my uncle Edwin, his name is Edward, um, which is incorrect. Um, still has two sons. The daughter's name is still misspelled. Um, Two more daughters, three more daughters have been born, including my mother there. And this um, one is also misspelled. This is just Gail, G-A-I-L. And this nine of 12, it means nine months old. You will see that sometimes. Um, you will also sometimes see a family with all the same last name and then a string of younger children with a different last name. And that is usually a siblings' children who have, and the sibling has passed away or is unable to care for the children and they have moved into the home of their aunt or uncle. So let's go back home. I just wanted to show you how to walk through the census in years, how to follow someone through the census in years to see what's happened to them. Um, and basically how to kind of get started in ancestry. And I will be back in part two to show you more of the things that you can explore in ancestry. Thank you very much.